you heard me. Here we go. Happy Sabbath, everyone. You know, the Bible says in Job chapter 38 and verse 7, it says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And this is the angels that when they saw the creation that took place, they shouted for joy. And this is why we come together on Sabbath, so we can celebrate creation, that God created all of us. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, we do have... Uh, a few announcements. We also want to say welcome to those who are vis visiting the Cedar Lake Church today. Uh, we want to welcome you and we're thankful that you are here with us to worship with us. Uh, but we do have a few announcements. I would like to invite Betty to give our first announcement. You imagine something's missing from the bulletin. There's so many announcements in the bulletin, and this is one more. And uh, it's from our conference connected with uh, community services, it is going to be here at the Heartland Center. If you have a pencil, the pastor is wanting pencils, so you can write in your bulletin. There's a few out. And I, I don't know what the story is about that. But anyway, if you've got a pen or a pencil, please write in your bulletin. Uh, Tuesday at 4 o'clock at the Heartland Center, they're going to be presenting essential oils. I have no idea what that's like. But maybe some of you do. And it's supposed to be very, very beneficial. So I urge you to bring your friends. This is open to not just Adventists, but uh, if you've got a friend you want to drag along, bring her or him even. Uh, there's also going to be a potluck at the end of the program, but if you don't want to eat there, you don't have to. So if you don't want to bring anything, just don't eat there. But there's, because there's something else going on at 6.30 on Tuesday, that shower, so um, please come and find out what, well, I'm coming to find out what this is about and bring someone with you at four o'clock at the Heartland Center on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Um, just also another uh, couple of announcements. Um, there is going to be a farewell uh, get together tonight for Jim and Sherry Lottie and also Stephanie Smart um, at 6 o'clock at the elementary school gym. So please be there and join the fellowship together in Vespers. And if you'd like to bring things, bring salad, it's, all, it's in the bulletin here. And also a reminder of the work beat tomorrow at 9 a.m. to noon uh, on the, well, on the 21st, on this, tomorrow, actually, yes. And then also, this is for the second mile um, in Edmore. And also, there's a graduation for the elementary school next week, Wednesday, at 7 p.m. at the Academy Chapel across the street. So feel free to look more into the bulletin here for any other announcement. Also, we're excited today because it's a high Sabbath today. Uh, we have a baptism today, and this is with Hannah uh, Kassanir, and I would like for her to come up here. Uh, with us. I see her family is here. We want to welcome you all. She, she just told me that her mom came last night as a surprise. So we're excited for her. And uh, how many of you have appreciated Hannah and her ministry here? Amen. Amen. She's been a blessing to us here. I have watched her in her journey uh, when we got to know each other last year and where she is today. And the Lord has been blessing her. And so she wanted to recommit herself to the Lord today. And as our custom in our church, uh, that we read the vows uh, so she can commit herself uh, in front of two or three, three witnesses. And we would like to have the church to participate uh, with these vows, that each vow that I will recite and she will agree, the church can say, Amen. Is that doable? All right, let's read the word, first vow here. I believe there is one God. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, a unity of three co-eternal persons. Amen. Amen. 
I accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for my sins and believe that through faith in his shed blood, I am saved from sin and its penalty. I renounce the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven my sins and given me a new heart. I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, my intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in my home and before the world. Amen. I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian. I covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study. I accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will. It is my purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and the memorial of creation. Amen. I look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when, the, when this mortal shall put on immortality. As I prepare to meet the Lord, I will witness to his loving salvation and by life and word help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. Amen. Amen. I accept the biblical teachings of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church. Amen. Amen. I believe in church organization. It is my purpose to support the church with my tithes and offering and by my personal effort and influence. Amen. Amen. I believe that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and will honor God by caring for it and avoiding the, the use of this of which is harmful. Amen. 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 I know and understand the fundamental Bible principle as taught at the seventh, by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I purpose by the grace of God to fulfill his will by ordering my life in harmony with these principles. Amen. I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. Amen. Amen. I accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that the people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into the fellowship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Later on today, as you see in the bulletin, right before the sermon, we're going to have the baptism. So let's enjoy our Sabbath, our high Sabbath today, and let us, let us prepare our hearts for uh, the service of the Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a beautiful Sabbath day where you have invited us once again into your presence. And Father, I pray today that you would give us open hearts and listening ears. Help us to hear what it is you have to teach us today. And may this time that we spend in your presence help us to reflect the image of our Savior, Jesus Christ, more fully. For we ask it and pray it in his name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Please join with us in singing hymn number 448, Oh, When Shall I See Jesus? 
stand as we sing our opening hymn, which is hymn number 249. Praise him, mm -hmm. praise him. Hymn number 249. Looks like we get a discount on that one. <laughs> anyway, um, at this time in our service, you have in the bulletin list of personal ministries time, but we are actually going to have an elder ordination in place of that for the local church, and I'm going to invite uh, Andres Mendoza to come up. Just so that you understand a little bit, there's been a lot of discussion in our church about ordination and the uh, biblical foundation for that recently. Uh, ordination is a service that does not con convey any special power upon the individual being ordained, but it's a way in the Bible that leaders were set apart and recognized as leaders of the local church. And so Andres Mendoza has been chosen to serve here as a local elder in the Cedar Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I'm going to invite him to come forward. Andres, if you wouldn't come up here. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to invite all of our elders here in the Cedar Lake Church to join me on the platform when we have a dedicatory prayer. But prior to that, Andres, God bless you. Praise the Lord for this church choosing to have you serve in this capacity. Uh, it is a solemn responsibility. I want to share with you what the scripture says. There are a few places that highlight this. One is in the book of Titus, which is where I'm going to go this morning. And I just want to tell you ahead of time that when I read this, you might think of backing out. Because if you've ever read the qualifications of an elder in the scripture, it's a high calling. It's a high calling, and it's a calling that we can only carry out through the grace of Jesus. Now, I'm reading in Titus chapter 1. And I'm starting in verse 5. The Apostle Paul writing here says, For this reason I left you in Crete, speaking to Titus as a young minister. He says that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. So Paul had set Titus apart as an elder, and now he was encouraging and, and actually commanding him to set apart others to lead in the local church in Crete. And he goes on to say this, If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dissipation or insubordination, for a bishop 
must be blameless. Now, there's two words used there. That first one, elder, and some people get confused on this. It has to do with maturity, and some people think, well, an elder has to be old. And of all places, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the last place I think people should say that, because if you go back to our history, at least half of our founding uh, uh, leaders were young people. Uh, the idea of elder having to do with maturity isn't age maturity, but spiritual maturity. And the Bible goes on, the Apostle Paul brings up the idea of an elder, and then he uses this word bishop in verse 7 that I just read. For a bishop, that word means an overseer. An elder is to oversee things in the local church to make sure that they are pleasing to God, that they glorify and honor Him. A bishop or an overseer must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money. In other words, there's no other motivation. There's no other thing that would dissuade an elder from his singleness of purpose in following God. And the leaders of this church have seen that in you, Andres. We believe that, that you are that kind of person that the Lord can work through. But hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convince those who contradict. And as I said, it's a high calling, but it's a calling that God qualifies us for, and I believe God's qualified you for this calling, and so do the local elders in this church and our church family. We voted this position in. It's something that a church body has to vote and so what I want to do at this time is I want to ask our local elders here in Cedar Lake to come up and we are going to pray together, again, as you're set apart as an elder in the, in the local church. And just so that you understand, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the only difference between an ordained minister like myself and a local elder is that I have authority over the world field, where for local elder, that same authority is just limited within the local congregation. So it's an equivalent calling. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask uh, Andres to kneel. We're going to kneel around him, and we're going to follow in the biblical model to lay hands on him. Again, not conferring any special power upon him. That comes from the Lord and through his Holy Spirit. But setting him apart because, uh, and, and giving him our, uh, uh, showing him our confidence in the Lord's calling in him. So as we kneel to pray, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads while we do so. And we're going to ask a special prayer on Andres. Is there something you would like to say? Oh, I'm just incredibly humbled and feel completely and utterly unworthy of this position. And I hope you know that I hope to be a blessing. And I hope the Lord can work in me and through me, despite of me and Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you that the reason that, that you have been chosen for this position is you already have shown yourself worthy in many ways, and you already have been a blessing, and we know that you will continue to be. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to, if we can just come back here, and elders, if we can just gather around, and if you can either, let's kneel together, and I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. And if you just want to lay your hands on Andres where you can and on one another. Father in heaven, Father, it is a high calling that you've given us as leaders in this local church and in the world as your people to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to reflect his image. And Lord, you have laid your hand upon our brother Andres here. Lord, it's for that reason alone that, that we have chosen to call him to this position because you have already called him. And Lord, I know that if you called him, you will strengthen him. We've seen evidence and fruit in his life that he has chosen to put you first and be faithful. We see it in his family. We see it in his leadership. We see it in his teaching. And so, Lord, now we're just asking in a special way for the Holy Spirit to work upon him, his heart, move in his life, move through him as a leader, Lord, as we work together to reach this territory for Jesus Christ, to proclaim the gospel and hasten the day of Jesus' coming. So, Lord, bless our brother Andres today to this end. 
For we ask it and pray it in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. And there's a certificate there. Good morning and happy Sabbath. So good to see every one of you here. You know, I, uh, I need advice from time to time, but I like it best when I can overhear advice given to someone else rather than directly to me. I don't know why that is, but uh, Mr. Beeman needed some advice, so he wrote a letter to Ellen White, and we're going to get to listen in to the advice that he got. See, Mr. Beeman was a piano tuner who lived in the city. He had a problem with his nerves. Uh, just two dishes coming together would make a clanking sound, and it would uh, bother him greatly. And, uh, he, he'd get upset about that. Well, he, he was married. He had a wife and, and his uh, mother-in-law also lived with him. And both of them, both of the ladies thought that the cure for his nervousness was to, uh, to uh, get after him about it and tell him that he shouldn't be that way. And that just made him more nervous. Well, so Ellen White, she knew what he needed, and she wrote some advice to him. She advised that they uh, make several changes in their life. And um, first, uh, they needed to move out of the city, out in the country. And I think if she were writing this letter today, she would say, don't take your TV with you because you can have all the temptations, all the irritations, all the uh, problems of the city by just turning the TV on. But uh, that's, that's not what she wrote because they didn't have TV back then. But anyway, uh, she encouraged them to move to the country where he could work outside, get out, get some fresh air, and uh, she thought that would help him quite a bit. Uh, also, she advised the ladies to uh, not try to correct his nervousness by uh, bawling him out. And uh, third, she advised that the Beeman's, oh, I didn't tell you, that he, he uh, not only was a piano tuner, but he had a wagon. And it, was, it was a pretty nice wagon, but it was used for coal porter work. And I don't know whether he did the coal porter work. I th it didn't say here, but uh, I think he uh, loaned it to, out to people who, to do the coal porter work. Anyway, she advised that he sell that wagon so that they could get out of debt because the debt was making him uh, a bit nervous. And uh, she also said that they should uh, take a look at their diet Make sure it's a simple diet because if you eat the wrong things, that'll increase your nervousness. And um, f then she said, when, uh, here, here's what she wrote. When you have done all that you can do, trust in God. Get out of debt and never again go into debt. Live so economically that you will not have to feel the galling burden of debt. Solomon wrote in uh, Proverbs 22, 7, said, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Uh, if you've been in debt and you've been out of debt, you know the difference, don't you? And uh, so let's thank God that we, we're in the, kind of in the country, aren't we? But we've got to remember to keep that TV off as much as we can. I think that would help. 
Well, the offering that's taken this morning goes for the local church budget. And uh, if the deacons would stand, we'll ask God's blessing on our offering this morning. Father in heaven, what a great God you are. And we're just so thankful for this Sabbath day and the sunshine and the opportunity we have to come here and worship. To wor and uh, we thank you for this opportunity we have to worship you in giving. We pray your blessing on the offering that's received and on, on those with a willing heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, guess what time it is? Time for a story, and Mr. Cleveland has a story for you this morning, and I can't wait to hear it, so come and get your baskets up front, and uh, boys and girls, and maybe some adults can give a little direction here. I notice that quite often uh, the middle row is most traversed, if, uh, but there's people out on the edges that hold up their dollars, too, so...
Well, good morning, children. How are you this Sabbath? Happy Sabbath. Do you know that you're very special to Jesus? Do you know that he talked about you when he was here on earth? I'm going to read you a verse, Matthew 18, 3 and 4. It says, Verily, this is Jesus speaking, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as a little child, the same shall be greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I've got a little basket here this morning. I want to show you something. And I'm going to let Linnell help me. And um, this is something really precious. In fact, I'll, um, we'll let you pet these little guys. This is, um, you're going to have to help me know who I've got here. All right, here, I've got Chess, or Chester. Chestnut. In fact, um, Sierra's here to correct me because she named them. This is Chess, and that's Hazel. Linnell has Hazel, Hazelnut. And these are little American red squirrels. And uh, you know what? I'm going to start over here. I want you guys to pet them. They're just so sweet, and, and they never would hurt you. And they're, they just make tiny little noises, just tiny little noises. And he's shivering right now because he's a little afraid. But, you know, they just love people, and they're so happy whenever we come to feed them. And when we first saw them, they were about the size of half my thumb. And what we were doing is we were, we were out. See, you want to pet them? This is a little American red squirrel. He just loves people. Look at that. And we were out clearing some land on our property, and we wanted to chop down some poplar trees so we could plant peach trees and cherry trees instead. And um, James, my son James, was running the big chainsaw, and he was chopping up this tree, and he noticed that in the middle of the tree there was a hole. And all of a sudden, as he chopped it into logs for firewood, out of the middle of that hole came a nest. And these little guys, like I said, were half the size of my thumb. They've grown a lot. Look at that. They were hairless and ugly as could be. And when you fed them, you could see the white milk in their tummies. They were just almost transparent. Nothing like the beautiful little handsome guy I've got in my hand right now. But you know what? What's so special to Jesus about babies and about little people is that they're dependent. Do you see what I'm saying? Jesus was preaching and he said, he said to the people that were listening, he says, you've got to be like a baby. You've got to be humble. And you've got to realize your need. And you know what, children? As you get older, you're still going to need Jesus. Do you need Jesus now? You and I always will need Jesus because we're sinners and we're in need of being humble like a little child. And these little squirrels, let me tell you, there's not much they can do but sit there and sleep and wait for more milk and wait for more milk. So I thought that that was a perfect picture of what you will need to do, children, all of your life. You need to wait for Jesus to speak to you through the Word and to speak to you through His Holy Spirit and through providences and to trust in Jesus just like these little baby squirrels trust in us to take care of them and to feed them. So this is Chess and Hazel, and they um, have come to church today to teach us that lesson. Would someone like to talk to Jesus and commit this day to him? Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day. I helped my uncle that got in a motorcycle accident, and that helped him to feel better, and that he's in the hospital. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can go back to your seats now. Yeah, his name is Chester. He's about eight weeks old. He's about eight weeks old. Yeah. yeah. He's growing every day. <laughs> yeah, he's precious. It's our privilege this morning to talk to the God of the universe. Wow. 
And uh, we can be assured that he listens. He knows our needs better than we do. And he loves us more than we love ourselves. So let's uh, bow before him as far as possible. Shall we kneel? Our Father in heaven, we kneel in awe before you, knowing that we are dependent entirely on you. We can't beat our own hearts, and we can't keep ourselves uh, living, but uh, you do that for us, and we just thank you for it. There's so many areas of need that we have, uh, most of which we are mostly unaware of. But we thank you that we have the assurance through your word that you love us, you care for us, and that we can bring our needs to you, and that you care about us and love us. This morning, we uh, are very thankful for the sunshine. We're thankful for this Sabbath day and what it means, the reminder that uh, you are not only our creator, but our redeemer. And uh, by your word, you spoke and it was done. And uh, this is the power behind the salvation that you offer to us. We're uh, concerned about some of your people today. Uh, Josh, we thank you that, that he's being cared for, that uh, your people have rallied to uh, assist him with his need. And uh, we're just so thankful that, uh, for the good news that we've heard so far. We pray that your continued blessing on him and his work and his, uh, his restore him to health and as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, many of our members also have physical needs. And uh, we pray that you would be with them, strengthen and encourage each one. And this morning, as we uh, listen to your word being brought to us by the pastor, pray that your spirit would uh, not only uh, guide his words, but uh, our thoughts as well, and help us to retain uh, the message that uh, you have sent to us today, and help us in the coming week that uh, we will share your love with, with our neighbors and friends. And, and, uh, Again, we thank you for this uh, worship service, and we pray your blessing that in everything that we do will be an honor to you and a blessing to others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sabbath. Will you turn in your Bibles to me, with me, in Romans 3, verse 21 to 26. Romans 3, 21 to 26. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were pre uh, previously committed. To demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus.
Um, the song we're going to sing today, I like to sing it as an encouragement to the people who have given so much for God's work. And sometimes you may, may not like see the effects right away, but when we get to heaven, it'll all be worth it. And I'd like to dedicate this especially to the GLAW staff and faculty for all you guys do for us um, at GLAW. <laughs>
giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. is getting ready. I'm noticing Hannah's uncle with a camera over here and there are some others who, uh, where'd Terry go? If you'd like to get closer to take pictures, I'm gonna invite you to do that. Only because I have sat where you've sat and a baptism happens one time and then afterwards you're just like, ah, I didn't wanna make a scene and now I didn't get the picture, whatever else. And this is a special event, so if you need to get in a little bit closer, uh, go ahead and do so. And uh, Pastor Daniel. Happy Sabbath again. We're excited again as we went through our vows earlier, and now this is it. Amen. And so she is excited to be baptized. We're, we're glad that her family is here, and, um, and the students are here to support her and the staff, and uh, the church family. And um, I know she said that she wanted some Bible verses um, that to be recited here. We have um, Mr. Mendoza, Elder Mendoza now and also Shastina, uh, as they go up front here to share a Bible verse uh, for this baptism. Actually, you guys, which one do we have? Yeah. Well, before, before I read this scripture, I have to say that it's been a wonderful experience to have the opportunity to get to know Hannah during this year. She's been a great blessing and I feel very honored that she asked me to read one scripture. And the scripture that I'm going to read is from the book of Romans chapter 6 verses 3 and 4. And he reads, Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And I want you to know that I'm very proud of you and that I'm praying that from this moment on, your life will be transformed just like the Lord has been working in your heart all this time to get ready for this very special day. One thing we like to do is Hannah, she'll come to Jennifer's and I's dorm room sometimes at night and we'll read verses um, from the Bible together. And one of the chapters that we like to read is from John 14. And Jennifer was really sad that she couldn't be here today because she's at Pathfinder Fair getting invested um, as a master guide. But she asked me to read us some specific verses that we like have read a lot when she comes to visit. And it's from John 14. The first verse is verse 14 and it says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. We praise the Lord for these promises in the God's word, amen. And we're glad that she is going to go underwater and come out a new creature in Christ. And so we're happy about that. I know I asked uh, Hannah to, to share a little of her journey and her experience, and she's going to do so at this time. Um, yeah, so um, I grew up as an Avenist, and I lived the typical Avenist life. You know, you get baptized, eat haystacks, and you know, whatever. And, um, but I don't know, something was missing. It was like, 
I made good decisions, and I, I wanted to follow God, but at the same time, it wasn't. I had, came to the point where I had to realize, like, okay, it's got to be for myself. It can't be like, oh, my parents are Adventists, so I'm Adventist. It doesn't work. And um, so I, when I graduated from high school and came here, I realized, oh, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, nobody's going to tell me what I have to eat, where I am on the weekends. I can do whatever I want. The only person that really knows is God. But is my life different? with God or without, sadly it wasn't. And so I realized, you know, somebody's gotta change, I gotta figure out, am I gonna follow God or am I not? And so at that point, I was, I guess, a deist. I was like, yeah, God exists, but he doesn't exist in my life. And so I left and did some good hard thinking in Ohio, and I'm really grateful to my aunt and uncle for letting me come and stay with them and praying for me. And um, I just, a whole bunch of things happened while I was there, and I was like, you know what, okay, I'm going to give this God thing a try. And so I came back and started studying with Mrs. Peterson in November, and I'm so grateful to you, Mrs. Peterson, for studying with me and um, answering my hard questions. And um, I guess it just led from there, and I'm, a lot of friends helped listen, like Lex Chastina said, I was over at Jennifer Chastina's room a lot asking questions, reading with them. And so, yeah, I'm just thankful to everyone who prayed for me and has been there, and yeah. Amen. Amen. Anna, because of your faith in Jesus and your love for him and your desire to do his will fully, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why don't we pray together? Father in heaven, we know heaven is rejoicing at this time. And Father, we are excited here. And Father, I pray, Lord, as we know that heaven has committed to be with her, to strengthen her when she's weak, to comfort her when she needs comforted. And I pray, Father, that you continue to bless her and put the joy in her heart. Father, help her to shine out and within. And I pray, Father, that you continue to be with her in ministry. And you have called her, Lord, to finish this work. So please, bless her. Put a hedge about her, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Boy, we have had a... Sabbath full of rich blessings already today, haven't we? And I don't want to overburden you with blessings today, so I'm going to do my best to try to cover things in a relatively reasonable amount of time, but I will say this, I've been sitting for a while, I want to invite you to stand up, turn to the person next to you, tell them happy Sabbath, stretch out a little bit. Get circulation back to your brains. But don't go anywhere. Stretch if you need to. <laughs> and then if you could be seated again. couple brief announcements. I found this on the platform. It's a clear button. I'm imagining it belongs to one of the children. I'm going to put it in my pocket. You just see me after the service and I'll give you the button back. So if you lost, if your child lost a clear button off their outfit, please see me. Somebody had mentioned to me something called spinners. I don't know what these things are, but apparently they are very popular and can be very distracting during a worship service. 
So if you would please refrain during the worship service, I know it's hard, but it would be much appreciated.